Okay, here we go. There's me. Okay. Oh, had to do some quick last minute changes to this just to make sure that we at least got test targets running because I didn't want to have everyone just kind of watch me fumble around doing that. Because <laughs> um, with this one, I clearly had to do a lot of uh, changes. My microphone might have leaked a little bit during the starting, too. So, whoops. <clears throat> I think it's because I forgot to hit the button, but you probably heard me mumbling as I was trying to figure that out. Um, in any case, it's figured out. <laughs> um, so I guess, without further ado, let's do an actual proper introduction this time around. Um, so, one second while I switch this. I gotta do this, because OBS and cameras on Windows are weird. Um, before I was using the built-in Mac OS Sonoma features, but as people are going to find out today, I'm going to be running the project on Windows. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, hello, everybody. Um, welcome back to the shenanigans of building a game for Playdate. Um, as we started last um, time that we did this, uh, we recently discovered that somebody managed to figure out how to get Playdate working, um, or how to get the Swift programming language working on it. And so today we're going to be working on rewriting the game using the Swift programming language instead. Um, this time around, though, there's an extra challenge in that we're doing it on Windows. <laughs> And not my Mac. Um, I don't want to delve too much into that, but it mostly just kind of has to deal with just me needing to take a break from some things and trying things out on Windows um, kind of helps uh, reset some perspectives. Um, so what's going on, everybody, in the chat here? Oh, look, Leviathan's here. And cheese slice item to the game because it's meant to be played on a cheese slice. How do you know that the packages aren't filled with cheese slices? We could be shipping them for all we know. Extra challenge is trying to keep your sanity with me in the chat. Maybe. Maybe. If the CPU doesn't give out. <laughs> ah. Alrighty. So let me just switch this over. And then do that. Okay, yay! We have our camera now, and let's make sure to put this in the fancy presentation mode, because I found out that somebody made an extension for that in Visual Studio Code. Yes, we're using Visual Studio Code, because Nova does not exist on Windows. <laughs> and just to show you here, yes, I am in fact running Windows. There you go. Now, now, now you also know the system that I'm running it on. Got this tiny little Windows PC for like, like about 150 bucks, and then just paid a little extra separately for a 16 gig RAM stick. So we'll see how this holds. <laughs> Though in my testing, um, on the sh on like a very small unlisted test stream, you folks may have seen me do that. Um, it handled both me playing Minecraft and streaming at the same time. Granted, I don't think that's much to say about, but it works, so we're rolling with it. Windows XP. Yes, I have themed my start menu and taskbar here to be Windows XP themed, as well as the wallpaper. Um, mostly because... I am kind of a bit nostalgic. Um, Windows XP was my childhood right there, essentially. Um, Windows 11 um, is uh, very interesting. <laughs> I remember setting this thing up, and it asked me so many questions during setup and trying to offer me so many Microsoft products. I'm like, bruh, I just want to set this up. I have taken the Parallels automatic setup for granted, for what it's worth. <laughs> Do you want to go back further? 
fine. Here, we'll, we'll do this just for you. We'll go down here to Retrobar, because that's the taskbar system I'm using. Here, there you go, Windows 95. How about that? I mean, it's still going to be using the XP start menu, because I don't want to go change that right now, but... <laughs> Anyway, the point isn't the XP. The point is <laughs> the point is the Swift. Um, so obviously we're using Visual Studio Code here, um, and this is running Windows. Now, some of you may have seen my Playdate post on this um, in the Dev forum as well as in the Dev Swift channel on the Playdate Squad Discord server. Um, Building on Windows is very tricky when it comes to Swift. Um, mostly because Make isn't really supported for the Playdate on Windows. Um, rather, the officially supported way is to use CMake. <laughs> I do not know CMake. <laughs> Suffice to say. Let alone getting it to work with Swift. Um... So I spent a week trying to figure out what to do. I eventually ended up settling for kind of taking the cheap route here. Um, if you see here in the bottom corner. Oh, this theme does a really terrible job at making that accessible. But um, we're actually running this under the Windows subsystem for Linux. So if I were to pop this up. Yeah, there you go. VMM WSL. <laughs> so we're actually running this under Linux, inside of Windows. Um, I do feel this is a very cheaper cop-out solution. Um, I would have loved to just do this natively, but I have not figured out how to do that properly. So, that's what we're working with. Um, another thing that we also have to keep in mind as well is um, the fact that because of this, I can only build for a device. Doing the simulator gets a little funny. Um, th there's some weird linker flag that it's not happy with, um, and I have not figured that out yet. Um, that being said, we're also using a slightly older version of Playdate Kit that's still supported um, building with make files. Um, newer versions, if you were to look at them today. So if I were to go back to uh, my browser here. And just search up Playdate Kit. Um, you will actually notice that we're way far ahead, and there's actually even a plugin. So all you have to run for this is you just got to run Swift Package PDC, and it will make the Playdate game package for you. You don't have to fumble around with make files or anything like that. Um, I could not get this to work under Windows either, so I just skipped it. Um, and I think suffice to say, the moral of the story here is a lot of the Swift toolchain stuff right now for this is still very centered around Mac OS. Um, so if you're running on a Mac, you'll pretty much have no issues with any of this stuff. It's when you decide to step out of that, that's when you have a problem. And I know that a good portion of Playdate developers are using a Windows system, like I am right now. <laughs> so that's not very ideal. So the closest that I can get is using WSL to get that running. Um, <laughs> again, not ideal. Run Linux and Windows and then run Windows and Linux. <laughs> Look, we're not here for recursive virtual machines. <laughs> I already had to limit the RAM on the WSL to like a gig just to make sure that it didn't overblow the memory available. Um, because for some reason it gave itself 8 gigs. So like, the entire usable memory that I have. <laughs> anyway. So let's focus on actually trying to get this working. Um, that does remind me, I do need to actually grab my playdate and plug it in. So one second while I do that.
Okay, we are back. Um, I forgot that the <laughs> the little Windows PC I'm running this on does not have more than four USB ports, so I need to unplug my mouse's one and just set it to Bluetooth mode instead, so I could free up the space. You probably heard me connecting the uh, Playdate in, but there's the Playdate. So we're probably going to be using the simulator and stuff to, or not the sim, we're going to be using the simulator to load it to the device and then loading, it's a thing, it's a thing, just to kind of show what we're working with here. So I'm just going to run the build task for this. You'll see it goes and makes its things. Yes. Okay. Oh, you know what? I might have... Yeah, I need to uncomment that first. And then run the build task. Because it's funny that way. Okay. Gr Ooh! I did not mean to do that. Uh... Right. So let's get that out of here. Go in to grab the Playdate simulator. And I'm also going to bring up the Playdate mirror so you can see the actual Playdate. Uh, if you zoom in, problem connecting to Playdate. For example, the simulator. Okay. We'll worry about that in a second. So we're just going to select our package resolve to PX. You gotta give it a moment to actually flash. You good? Okay, we're good. So now we close the simulator to let mirror do its thing, and you can see we flashed an image of uh the Playdate game on here. So, that's how we're going to have to do it today. Oh, brother. It's fine, though. It's fine. We can get something to work. It's not the end of the world. Um, set that back to home. Oh, that was weird. So, no audio for you. Okay. So here is what we're going to start doing. Um, I think let's probably start doing the Charlotte library, because um, that's probably going to be the easiest to work with in terms of this, um, since we know that, it, that we also have written unit tests for it. Um, so we can do a little bit of development this way. So uh, can I disable the centered layout again? I'm kind of regretting turning that on. There we go. Okay. So we kind of just have this dummy Charlotte test or Charlotte library file in here. Um, so let's go ahead and make a new Swift file. And I'm just going to grab both our... Whoops. Uh, did I do a bad... I think I did a bad full screen Zen mode tab bar multiple tabs. Thank you. Okay. Don't be me. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we only just have a few methods in here, um, which is not too bad, but we have the more important um, vec two I and vec two F. Now, I don't remember if generics work on here. I guess we'll see. Um, so, let's make a public struct of a vector2i. Or I guess we could just call this an int vector2. And then we have a public var in er, x int, and then public var y int. 
And then we can do the same thing for you. Public struct int vec not int uh, float vector two. Public var x float. Whoa, not flatten collection. Where'd you get that? We could use generics here, but I don't know if generics are supported under um, Swift Embedded. That's the thing. And then here we just have definitions for adding, subtracting, and um, whatnot, as well as distance. Um, so that's fine. Um, we could try writing the tests for those. So I'm just going to rename this to be the um, vector tests. And I'm just going to stick this one underneath. There we go. OK. We got like four screens at once here. <laughs> Love it. Final class vector tests. XC test case. Um, we're just going to delete you. And we're just going to do func test vector addition throws. Well, actually, you know what? Let's actually try that. Um, public struct vector two value. We want to make sure that this is numeric, and then public var x value, public var y value. This should allow us to. Uh, this should allow us to do things more simply. Um, and then we're just gonna make a quick public extension um, vector to equatable and hashable. So that means that we can actually um, we can actually say that things are equal to another. Uh, yeah. So I guess let's say let vector equal vector two float x five y five gonna write a very simple test vector dot x five this is just to see whether we can actually get it to run while we're waiting for that. As an Apple fan, what is your opinion on oranges? I don't like eating them raw, but I do like the orange flavor. I just don't like it when it stains my hands. Oh, I forgot to edit the package.swift thing to get rid of the C playdate issue. Whoops. That's important. Allergic to them. Oof. Do be like that sometimes. Run task task. Do it again. Da, 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 da. Uh, stored property type value does not conform to hash. Okay, so... That's good to know, because that means generics do work. Whoa. Just going to run the test task again, just for it to do a thing. Oop. Float. Value initializer. Ah. Uh. Right, I forgot they did that. This is what I don't like about synthesized initializers. 
They don't always work. It's like my only food allergy. <laughs> my mother and sister have a lot of allergies when it comes to food, so... Should be lucky that you only are allergic to oranges. Okay, great. So that works. That works. Um... I have a ton of allergies not related to food. Yeah, but I mean, we're talking about food allergies specifically here, right? Like, I'm not talking about, like, all the other allergies. I, I, I'm talking specifically about food allergies here. <laughs> so. Okay. So unit tests do run, and we do know that generics work. That makes this a lot more interesting. Um, so what we can do, then is I'm going to write out some information here. Um, so let's write out another extension. Um, so we're just going to create the static funk plus. Well, no, I think we actually do need to implement this. Um, vector2 RHS vector2. Two, which returns a new vector. Not a single value encoding container. What? The autocomplete on this is very weird. So we can just simply return a new vector 2 with x of lhs.x plus rhs.x and then y to be lhs.y plus rhs.y. Right, because this is the left-hand side of the plus equation, this is the right-hand side. I did not mean to do that. Um, so let me also grab our tests that we wrote, because I want to copy those down as well. So we have vec2f here. So we're going to say let 1 equal vector 2 um, x, 1, y, 1, right, um, and so we're going to say let result equal 1 plus 1. Oh! Binary operator cannot be applied to two vector, but we just wrote the Okay, it may be having a weird compiler issue. We'll see if it actually runs. Um, XET assert equal result um, vector 2 x 2 y 2. Yeah, let's run the tests again. You can do it like that. Yeah, no. We're still having a weird issue here. Let's make this explicit. Binary operator cannot be applied to two operands, but we wrote the method. Uh oh. Static func plus RHS. Let me actually look at this real quick. Um, <laughs> operator overload plus. I just want to make sure that we're doing this right. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, let 
Okay, fine, let's... What if we just did this? No? Uh, binary operator plus cannot be applied to two vector two operands. Why is this? Oh, it's because I forgot to mark this public. <laughs> yeah, that would do it. It's got to be it. <sighs> right? Okay. Run the tests. Taking a while to build. You're acting like you're dumb. I have no clue what any of this code means. Half of the time we don't know what we're doing with the code. <laughs> okay, so the build passed. And we get a successful test. Yay! And that, surely enough, had to have been the issue. Um... I bet if I were to open this back up now, yep, now it's happy. Yay! So that's exactly what we wanted. Um, so now we're going to want to do the same thing for this as well. So func test vector subtraction throws. Um, so let two vector two int equal vector 2 x 2 y 2 and then we're just going to let sub equal 2 minus 2 it's gonna scream right now because it doesn't know that that exists um, and then we're just gonna write xct assert Equal, so we want to make sure that these things are equal to each other. So subbed, and then vector 2, x, 0, y, 0. Okay, so now let's go actually implement that. A static fong minus. The left hand side is a vector 2, and the right hand side is a vector 2. And we're going to bring back a vector. Vector 2, LHS, or not LHS, um, the X will be, I think we, yeah, minus LHS dot X, and then Y, RHS dot Y is LHS dot Y. So we're just going to subtract individually that it's probably still screaming because we haven't actually built it but it's fine let's run the test see that we get a passing result you should make a sandbox game for the playdate next honestly I want to make a witness like after this <laughs> Because there aren't a lot of Playdate games that are witness-like in nature. And I want to see something like that on the Playdate. I'm sure somebody's making a sandbox game, though. Wow, okay, this is definitely taking a while for... Stop torturing people's brains. <laughs> Look, if you consent to downloading the game, then it's on you for your brain being tortured. I'm not liable. <laughs> you, you, you bought the game. <laughs> you bought it. You played it. You're kind of torturing yourself for 
playing the game that you bought. <laughs> Blame you for making it. Right, because the only games that we're allowed to play these days are Minecraft and Fortnite. <sighs> Why does this take a while? I hate it because I'm not smart enough for it. Skill issue. What can I say? Okay, this is taking a while. Um, I will be right back. <laughs> I am going to grab some more coffee.
Okay, I've returned. Um, I think we have a problem. <laughs> it is uh, taking quite a while to build. Not sure why that is. <laughs> Come back with coffee and it's still taking forever to run. Um, I mean, I may need to try just resetting WSL entirely. So, let's give that a shot. It may just be having a bad day. Shut down. Let's see. What have I missed in chat in the meantime here? Get yourself a bit burger, I assume that's what it says on your t-shirt? Probably. I mean, I haven't gotten that far into a lingo to really know. Um... But I did visit Bitburg. Pretty nice. The computer thinks you're too lazy and doesn't want to do it itself. Well, the computer doesn't have a choice, does it? Try this again. Let's just disconnect. Oh, the playdate did. The playdate disconnected. I see. Okay. Uh, put this back into presentation mode. It's resolving package dependencies. Press any key to close it. Great. So, let's try that now. Yeah, there we go. It just needed a good old turn off and turn back on again. Great, all tests passed. So we are schmoving. We are schmoving. Computer doesn't want you to make a wit. <laughs> yeah, right. This isn't even the witness like game. Uh, okay, so I think the last one we need to do is the distance. Um, so I think for now we just need to leave this as a stub of some kind. Yeah, just kind of a stub. So we'll do static funk distance. which just returns a value. Be a bit more formal about it. The computer knows that you will work on the witness like game after this one. It already knew that. It already knew that I was making a witness like. <laughs> Microsoft already collects enough data to know that. <laughs> I got files stored in one drive for that. So, like, it's not like they don't know. Like, the code is on GitHub, too, as well as GitLab. So, it's there. They they well knew this well before I started Playdate. <laughs> so, that's no excuse. Now, let's get back to writing some tests. Funk test vector distance throws. What? I 
I probably should just... Yeah, because we're recreating these, so... Ideally, I'd want to move these back into... Okay. Where was I? Yes. So we can remove that line. And then self one there. This one we'll keep, but we'll change this to self zero. Right, um, so we're going to say let distance now equal vector two int dot distance. Well, maybe I don't need to do that. Distance um, LHS will be 1. RHS will be 0. But I need to do self on these. Like so. And then we just want to say XCT equal distance 1 let 2 equal vector 2x 2y 2 vector 2 int okay and then we're going to say let farther equal uh, vector 2 dot distance LHS 2 RHS self dot 0 yep and then we're gonna say XCT assert equal farther to be the well, I want to make this a float. So then we can say that this is the square root of 8. Yeah, square root f, just to be sure. Okay. Um, let's watch the tests magically fail. So that's what we do around here. Oh boy. <laughs> Test suite failed with one failure. Yep, there we go. 2 is not equal to 2.828427. That's expected. We have successfully written a failing test. So now we just re-implement this. Alright, so we'll go back to vector C here. Right, so let squared x equal... Power? What? Do I need to import foundation? I may need to import foundation. Try that. Yep. Mm hmm. So we're going to do rhs.x minus lhs.x. Two. Cannot convert value to expected argument type decimal. Uh. I think it's confused. We'll see.
Mm, this one's just as confused. To expected argument type decimal. Ah, uh, where value decimal. That works. Uh, return the square root of squared x plus squared y. Where t is decimal. Why is that decimal conform to you, floating point? Ah. I don't think the conformance there is helping at all. Pow x decimal y int. Uh where value floating point do you like that no okay that works then i'm just gonna Just going to uh. Here's what we'll do. We're going somewhere with this. Um... Take that. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, is it because we need to make these floats now? Too many type conversions in a day. Okay. Run the tests! Nice! No failures. We did it. We... We beat Minecraft. <laughs> cool. So now what I'm going to do is I want to make this a convenience. To. So 
we're just going to return self.distance LHS self RHS vector. Right, we need to specify where value is float. Oh. Okay, you know what? Give me a second. I am fighting this right now, and it's not helping. don't like it when it does this weird is int what I don't know are you helping Gonna run the tests again to verify that they didn't break anything by doing that. Ooh, member one cannot be used on instance of type vector tests. That's because this needs to be that self dot one dot distance, not right. See, this is why we run the test before committing. I think I am helping by saying dumb things in the chat for my own entertainment. I guess. <laughs> okay, great. Test passed. So we ported over pretty much everything about vectors here. Um, the only thing that we haven't done is documentation, but that should be really easy. Um, Cause I can just copy this and just boop. I'm not writing an initializer documentation thing yet. So glad you agree. <laughs> yeah, it do be like that. Okay. As if connected with a single straight line. Yes. Yes. And then we can say this is parameter vector. Returns the distance between the two vectors. Copy that there. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then we're just going to shift all up and just do that. Okay, so that is basically vectors, which is good. Um, and 
I think we can also extend this out a little bit too. Um, right, because I want to say um, static let zero f equal vector to float x zero. Whoa. Y zero. Or actually, I has idea. Um, public extension vector to where value is int static let one is vector two x one y one. Do this again, except we're going to say that this is zero. Cool. And then we're just going to shift this down as well and make this a float. Because we're working with generic values there. Okay, so I think in here we can remove these. Vector to int dot one. Oh. <laughs> I'm now pressing random controls for some reason. You love to see it. Um, vector to int dot zero. Vector to int dot one. Apologize to the entire Plants vs. Zombie community. Oh dear, what did you do? What did you do? So that does not sound good. Plate is the most annoying character in the... Ow. Whatever. Dun, da, 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 da. Nice. So that small refactor helped, um, and now we actually have access to public instances of those values, so we're not having to run around and recreate them. Excellent. Um, now this reminds me that we need to... commit these changes. So we're going to stage all these changes, um, do the VS Code one separately. So now we port Charlotte vector code. And then stage these ones as well, because I did something with that. Oh, I don't know why I decided to do it there. Delete. Okay, add VS Code tasks. And then we will push those. Now, that wasn't a lot. Then again, we were running into <laughs> some memory things, and then we just kind of derailed a bit. Um, but... This is pretty much kind of what we're looking at, right? Just taking our existing code that we've written in these files and we're just going to port them over. Then eventually we're going to port over the game code itself. Um, so hopefully it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, <laughs> the vector one wasn't really that painful. Um, 
So, yeah, so far we're doing good. Um, it may take a while to do more of the porting over. Um, but at least we can run the Charlotte tests um, from Swift and not the C version. And eventually we can just end up removing our C code. That's the idea here. Um, I will also probably find a better VS Code theme because while it does look nice on the surface, I don't like that when you hover over it does this weird thing and it just makes it very inaccessible to read. Um, so that will be a future me problem. <laughs> hello from... Oh, hello! <laughs> I hope you are doing well. Um, I don't know what time it is over there right now, but uh, glad you could join us for this last bit here as we kind of briefly go over the changes that we just made. Now, let's see. What are you looking? What am I looking at? Code. You're looking at code, Leviathan. That's what this is. Code. <laughs> Alright, so next week, or next time, depends on if something pops up, like what happened the last time, we will hopefully try to drill through the rest of porting Charlotte over. Um... Right, since Charlotte is that shared library that lets us run the tests um, on some of the shared code. I don't know why this one's still screaming. Do I need to just close this and reopen it? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, uh, let me do this real quick because if I don't do this, the camera gets all funky. Yep, there we go. Alrighty, that is where we are wrapping it up today. Um, if you enjoyed today's shenanigans, um, be sure to tune in next time, because there will be plenty more of that um, as we port over Charlotte and then eventually the rest of the Playdate game over. And then hopefully actually finish the game. <laughs> that would be ideal. Um, so for those of you that are watching this, on YouTube after the fact. Um, if you liked the content, the like button is there. Feel free to smash it. Um, and tune in next time when we do this again. So, take care. <laughs>